I will define feminist foreign policy as a political framework which put the gender lens and intersectionality approaches at the core of its works. It includes promoting women's rights in the diplomacy and also facilitating structural changes to support gender equality agenda for a more justice policy. That feminist foreign policy is a framework, but I do also think that it's a mechanism for a just and equitable uh, society and also for a just and equitable understanding of peace and security. And I also think that feminist foreign policy comes as a response to the um, discrimination that we currently have and to an obsolete set of values uh, in which men and women, unfortunately, are not yet seen to be equal. And I would also highlight the importance of intersectionality in foreign policy in general, uh, and most importantly, the importance of intersectionality when talking about feminist foreign policy. Looking at my, my own country, the first Latin American and country from the global south to announce its uh, feminist foreign policy, um, I would define it as both also a framework uh, a mechanism and a way to advocate for, for gender equity as at the core of all policy, both domestic and foreign, um, in, in order to, well, try to um, undo centuries of harm that has been done by, by the patriarchy and also um, help uplift all the women, uh, not just cis women, all women that identify as women um, in, uh, in a way that can achieve a more just and equitable society for, for everyone. So for me, uh, feminist foreign policy is everything what has been said, uh, of course. And I think what is really important uh, to understand is, is that it's not only a uh, um, considering gender at the center of uh, foreign policy or ensuring that women uh, or marginalized group participate in decision making process. I think it's it's also uh, understanding that it's um, it's it's a real um, uh, successful social justice movement um, that is needed to ensure a more just and secure world. Uh, I think it's about really challenging the, the um, existing uh, statu quo and modus operandi of international relation in general. So, so I think it's uh, a real modern, innovative uh, and radical uh, policy that is needed and that can be a bit risky uh, like at the political or diplomatic level, because we use the word feminist, but at the same, at the same time, and I think it's crucial and, and needed. Um, some of the most important takeaway that I have for this uh, class so far is the first understanding the uphill battles and challenges uh, in integrating the gender angle into national and international assistance policies in countries which, impl which have implemented the feminist foreign policy. And from Swedish feminist foreign policy specifically, I've learned how foreign policy is used as a practical tool and agenda for change to strengthen the rights, representation, and also resources for women and girls, as stated in its pillars. Uh, the necessity of representation, the necessity of an intersectional understanding upon uh, feminist foreign policy and foreign policy in general, and also, um, I would say the challenges and limitations of the international framework, but also the possibility of these challenges and limitations to be changed um, and actually, you know, evolving with time and with the involvement of different communities and diverse communities. I think for me, it has been a, so far a very hopeful class. Um, in terms of seeing how how many women, uh, people in general, but women especially, and uh, women of color, women, queer women uh, from the global south are, are really pioneering um, these ideas and ideal values that aren't shouldn't be considered radical, but um, in in uh, the status quo of today they are, um, and. At the same time, uh, realizing that we have a lot to to work on, 
uh, we have a long way to go in, in order to really reach uh, gender equity all, all around the world. Um, and kind of how uh, different countries or regions of the world are struggling with, with different uh, issues, which is why it's so important to have local leaders and, and uh, women, especially, of course, uh, involved in, in decision-making processes and um, highlighting the, of course, that the, there, there are differences in, in the issues that we're dealing with um, country-wise or, or region-wise, but also that we are all fighting for, for the same end goal, which is uh, gender equity and um, how all oppressions are connected. So if we're uh, working all together to, to end the patriarchy, <laughs> um, and uh, different uh, modes of oppression, we we will all win in the end. First, I think it really allowed me to better understand what does it mean to implement a feminist foreign policy, especially because I'm currently uh, interning for the French embassy here in Tunisia. Uh, I'm in Tunisia right now, and it's very sunny today. And uh, and so I really saw in practice what does it mean because I had the chance to at the same time. Um, uh, learn from the Zoom classes and then uh, discuss with my colleague at the embassy on what they understand as uh, um, on gender, gender equality, what does it mean uh, in practice, you know. And and I observed that it's, there's uh, uh, still uh, many challenges, a uh, long, uh, long road, uh, but I remain oh, um, uh, full of hope, especially because and and thanks to all the activists, uh, the, the 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 women that we met during this class, uh, they 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 were they, they came from um, many regions of the world. They they work at um, uh, various levels. Uh, they faced similar challenge, but always remain uh, optimistic. So I think it's important for us. Uh, young activists to, to meet these people, very inspiring. Um, and finally, I think the, 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 uh, the fact that we, we are in the process of uh, doing a simulation, we are uh, preparing a simulation uh, in our class. And uh, I think through the simulation of the generate, uh, Generation uh, Equality Forum, we, uh, I will learn um, concrete negotiation and advocacy tools that will be uh, very needed for my career. I think Indonesia, even though it has not yet to declare as a, uh, a country that which will implement feminist foreign policy, but I think Indonesia also has like some pro improvement when it comes to gender representation. It is one of the many countries which uses an electoral quota to bring balance in the House of Representatives. Under the administration of our first female president, um, a general election law was passed in 2003 to ensure that every political party participating, participating in a general election has at least 30% women representation in their national, provincial, and local representative. And the proportion of women then um, had, had since then uh, steadily increase from 32% in 2004 to around 40% in 2019. Well, I know it is not enough, but hopefully we can achieve gender parity in the coming years. And our current former foreign minister, Ibu Retno Marsudi, who served for two consecutive administration is also the first female foreign minister that we have. And uh, I do really hope to see more women figure in our um, government side? Uh, I would say that the road ahead is very long and the fight continues in Romania. I would say that we are pretty far from implementing a feminist foreign policy. We have a lot of internal issues uh, in regards to gender equality and gender equity. Uh, I would name some of them. One of them, which I think is very, very you know, difficult and we still have a long way to solve this issue is gender-based violence, especially domestic violence. The second one is the patriarchic system which has been imposed and promoted by the Orthodox Church and which highly influences, you know, the dynamics of the Romanian society. Uh, and the third would be the lack of representation of women in politics 
uh, out of our current cabinet, we only have one female, which is <laughs> for me very, very sad and very disappointing. But I believe in the struggles of Romanian activists. I believe in their fight. And I believe that I would live a day in which Romania would reach a higher level of gender equality or gender equity. And every day I fight for this as well, even from distance. And I hope that one day I would see a country in which the notion of feminism is at least you know, acknowledged, in which feminism is not a bad word, and in which gender equality and gender equity are the top priorities of my government and of the decision makers from my country. Uh, our, our domestic situation is uh, not great in terms of, of women's rights. Um, and in particular, uh, highlighting, I think, femicide and, and gender-based violence is, is really important. Um, there is a really terrible statistic that um, around 11 women are, are killed every day in, in our country. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, I don't want to pretend that just because we have a feminist foreign policy that everything is is, is great domestically and I think yeah like I said it's it's really important for me to highlight this uh disconnect I guess in in between how we approach our our, our foreign policy and and what is being done uh domestically um so yeah I think there's a long way to go in in terms of um protecting women against violence um but having a, a feminist foreign policy i think gives me hope that uh if we're conducting our our foreign policy in in a feminist way with uh, gender equity in mind um that this will also lead to to that same uh outcome domestically i think the fact that uh, french is really committed at the international level uh since uh the G7, the French presidency of the G7, and the fact that it was really focused on gender equality and many initiatives were launched to better adopt and implement progressive frameworks toward gender equality. So it was their first concrete expression of the commitment of my country towards gender equality. And, and and then there is uh, the fact that we are co-hosting the uh, Generation Equality Forum, which is, I think, a concrete example of, uh, of, of a success, of a commitment. But still, I think uh, just the fact that we don't call uh, our feminist foreign policy a feminist foreign policy, but a feminist diplomacy might be uh, a challenge because it might be mis- and, um, understood uh, just because diplomacy is just a tool of a foreign policy, you know, so it might um, narrow the scope of our form, uh, feminist foreign policy. And I'm a bit afraid of this. It might not be uh, in every aspect of uh, our um, uh, foreign policy, but we will wait for the own book as uh, Sweden published, the, uh, the, you publish your own. Um, we, so we will wait for our own book to really uh, see the guidelines um, of what does a feminist diplomacy mean. I think uh, for many people, the word feminist is still taboo. Uh, maybe not as much in France and in other countries for sure. Uh, I think uh, we are being progressive on this, but still I know a lot of my friends who doesn't want to be called feminist because they, they see it as too radical. Uh, and they don't understand that it it's it means gender equality and it means considering men, women, uh, marginal people, uh, under uh, represented group. Um, they just see it as a, a movement, radical movement that want the the that that only focus on women uh, only when actually it's really not about that. You know, it's way more complex. So. Yeah, I, I still uh, face every day this question, so for sure, and and uh, and I always try to sensitize them to like the the broad aspect of uh, the word. Actually, in my country, we recognize like six religion, 
um, and each of them they have their conservative groups. So we also experience some pushback from um, from religious leaders who who oppose those kind of feminist notion, because as what happened in most of uh, countries as well, uh, the word feminist is always associated with hating men and, and aggressive um, and it always like related to women issue well it, it's actually like includes all women with all complexities with all identities with all um, uh, their intersectionality so it is actually like really important to actually to find the common ground and to be mainstream at the local level because we have diverse ethnic group we have um uh, 17,000 island and it's kind of complicated also in the terms of uh, a uh, for diffusion program and for dissemination efforts it takes like we need to localize the context so that people would understand better what it is as feminist in the first place because lots of misconception lots of pushback from the conservative groups as well um, but I do really hope that this time around we also uh, engage uh, with uh, moderate uh, religious leaders to promote that kind of narration in the public, even though it is not using feminists, but uh, uh, but gender equality, for example. Like we also have that kind of problem with uh, the acknowledgement of LGBTQ um, and society. It is also one of the things that we need to fight for, one of the things that we need to work on that. So it is such a long way to go for, for that. But to me, it is, there is always still a hope, um, but we always need to localize the context so that people understand better the context. I think there's a little bit of a, of course, I think there's generally pushback from, from society as a whole um, when countries announce their, that they have a feminist foreign policy or um, that they're going to be working with feminist issues or, or whatnot. Um, but I think the context of, of the global South of, um, is a little bit more different um, with that because I, well, I, I'll speak for my country at least. Um, there's a lot of violence uh, against women that call themselves feminist. Um, and even from, from other women that um, have this, uh, misrepresented idea of what uh, the feminist movement is and what it means for one to be a feminist. Um, so, well, to be honest, I don't think many people in Mexico even know that we have a, a feminist foreign policy, even if it's relatively new. Um, and I think a lot of it has to do with the, the context domestically. Um, there have been a lot of, of protests recently in the last um, decade or so uh with the with the feminist movement um and well they generally fight for of course uh gender equity but i think the two main uh points that they're trying to get across is uh femicides um that they should be recognized as such um and uh to legalize abortion i think those are the two big fights in 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 my country and a lot of people uh, really disagree with, with the feminist movement. And it's really sad to see, um, not just that they disagree with it, but uh, make fun of, of it when, when it's such a, uh, a terrible situation uh, domestically of, of, of what is happening. A lot of misunderstandings with the word feminist in general in Romania. Like, to be honest, I, I worked for feminist organizations in Romania and I also, I'm, I'm now me a member of this feminist organization and it's a very hard fight. It's a very hard fight because like people, you know, from Romania, they call you crazy if you tell them that you're a feminist because they think that you want, you know, female domination and you want to get rid of all the men and you think, and there is this perception, which I find so, so sad that there are people who think that just because there is legal equality between women and men, there is actual equality between women and men. And I think that this has been a struggle, you know, for the feminist movement in Romania to prove that, you know, the equality in face in the in law doesn't mean anything in practice. 
when you don't have, uh, I don't know, when you don't have shelters for victims of domestic violence, when you don't have any kind of, you know, training for first line respondents to domestic violence, when, you know, in Romania, there is a traditional saying, I'm even embarrassed to say it, but just to give you a representation of how much it, it means, you know, to have this mentality somewhere rooted in the culture and tradition of your country. There is a saying that says, if he beats you, he loves you. You know, this is, you know, something that people usually use to justify domestic violence. So I think that the word feminist uh, and the word feminism has came a long way in Romania. Like it is true that there has been progress. It is true that you know there are more and more organizations, more and more initiatives, more and more uh, protests. Uh, the feminist organizations are very active. They are very reactive, which is great. But it's still you know a word that is not understood, a word that is misrepresented and a word that still, I don't know, holds this bad connotation and that people cannot engage with. And um, especially because we also have, you know, some <laughs> very conservative movements that have been going on and off uh, <laughs> in the public um, eye, uh, who are very, very conservative in terms of abortions, very conservative in terms of you know LGBTQ, very conservative in terms of sexual and reproductive rights, and they've been pretty popular in terms of rhetorics. Uh, they didn't go very far, thank thankfully, but they have still gathered their own audience. So yes, I do think that there is a long way for the Romanian public to understand what feminism truly means and why and why we need feminism so much, not only in Romania but all over the world, honestly. We have been highlighting all the struggles and limitations of our, our own countries and our own uh, feminist foreign policies or domestic policies. Um, but I am I am very hopeful. I do want to recognize all the work that that feminist uh, grassroots activists, all the way to to diplomats and in, in their and yeah in the government have have done. Um, they are really strong people that are really fighting a, a system a whole system of oppression every day and um we're not the first people to to do that and we won't be the last um and i yeah i want to recognize all the the feminists that are out there fighting for for a more just and and better world for not just women but uh everyone however they identify i also think that the, the work that has been done on feminism needs to be recognized and i am in true all of all the feminist organizations and advocates and diplomats who have fought so hard especially in my country i know how difficult it is and how harsh it's the fine fight but i am as hopeful as alisa is and i do think that we have a long way ahead, but we have all the instruments that we need and we have courage. And if we include this intersectionality in feminism that I do think is fundamental and cannot be left aside, uh, I think we're going to be able to make, you know, a safer and yeah, in a cliche way, yes, a better place for everyone, regardless of who they are, where they come from or what, how they identify as and yeah, I, I really want to thank everyone who, who joined this fight and I know how difficult it is. And I do think that these people in general who have fought this fight are to be recognized because all their efforts will never remain unseen. So yeah, I think it's very important that we recognize them and that we cherish their efforts. Uh, we would like to also thank to the Shredis Embassy to organize this event and as well as to be the pioneer in this feminist foreign policy and also in publishing its guidance. I hope it is translated into many, many languages so that people get more access to know it better, to know the conception of how you uh, formulate the three R. I think it is really relevant to be done in a domestic level. So I do really hope that more uh, organizations find hopes, uh, find the strength in their ongoing struggle. So thank you very much. I think it's important uh, at the academic level to uh, promote this um, these classes. You know, uh, as 
uh, it was said by our professor is the first time that we have this kind of class in, in Sciences Po and it's a master all in English. And uh, as a French, uh, I know that in other university, we do not have gender studies. So I, uh, I think it's important to uh, promote gender studies and, and, and uh, make it more accessible to everyone, uh, especially men, because in our class, there is no men. So <laughs> I think we, we, we have to organize this event and promote it because, um, because we, we are all optimistic and we should share our um, hope and faith in this uh, fight.